this conference will now be recorded. Okay, so it is not like shut down normal. I think it is shut down transaction. No. Yeah, uh, no, if you don't mind, can you just repeat whatever you said? Sorry for that. Okay, so start is like starting of the cluster PGCTL start. Okay, so you cannot start your uh, class cluster from Postgres prompt. You have to start from OS level. There is no start or stop commands at the Postgres uh, level. We cannot log in and start and stop. So only at the operating system uh, users has a privilege to start and stop the cluster. Okay, that's what I told. And stop when we stop the cluster, we we I just type this command as well. PGCTL stop minus D. This is the data directory and minus M is the option. Okay, minus M is option. If I don't specify anything i just say stop minus d then it is just like in it is known it is known as uh, it is a normal shutdown but it is very similar to your immediate in oracle okay because everybody is an oracle db here so i'm comparing with oracle okay so it is just like an immediate where it will roll back all the transactions that are running okay it will roll back all the transactions and uh, and it will not allow any new connections any new transactions to work but if i say smart then smart will not roll back any transaction okay it will not roll back any transaction it will it will wait for all transactions to complete okay it will wait for the transactions to complete but will not allow any new connection okay it will not allow any new connection okay so then is a so if i say so we have this this is immediate okay this is immediate this minus m okay minus m we give minus m and immediate okay this is the key point where we give anyways this is good actually in postgres we need not to mention anything because generally we have to do that one with that stopped immediately right okay and that is the normal shutdown okay immediate over here is just like an abort in oracle i have specified also just like an abort okay uh, something uh, it is uh, um which is different okay but yeah they have uh, they, they have would have read uh, oracle definitely before preparing postgres that is for sure so there is a bot and that is known as an immediate over here so immediate is just like it will not perform any checkpoint other will perform a checkpoint okay but this will not going to perform any checkpoint this is just like and shut down a bot and a crash recovery occurs during the startup so there is no separate process to do a crash recovery uh, the postgres process itself will perform a crash recovery okay so if uh, i will just show you again uh, three options Okay. So this is three option we'll come, come back to startup sequence as well so fast shutdown is the default option known as the fast shutdown then is the smart shutdown the so smart shutdown is uh, th this is minus m sh smart shutdown stops accepting new connection waits for all backends to quit so backends is the processes to quit okay backends is the uh, process that is started or the postgres process that is started that is a link between your users and your postgres so that is a backend okay i think we did it in the uh, demo session also I, I i i specified about this backend okay so in both smart and fast shutdown the cluster is left in a clean state or okay? a cluster is left in a clean state when stopping fast or smarter postgres performs a final checkpoint writing all the modified buffers in the memory to the disk and it also write and all these changes are being saved in the pg control file as well okay along with the uh, all this information so pg control file it is also being there then is an immediate which is just like an a shutdown about okay are there any option with the startup or startup is only at the os from os level you start a cluster yes yes os level you start there is no option there is no option okay but and when you are starting you are starting at the os level no like uh, yes and then if you want to stop you are at the postgres level yes and then stop post no 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 stop is also at os level only oh okay okay stop also okay pgctl you have to use pgctl to stop and start okay okay so okay. i was reviewing that i was just trying to run that command on the server level war library pgsql is there but there is no data subdirectory within pgsql 
So is this something uh, um, that should be created as part of the installation? That no, which one you're talking about? In in this, this in this in in this yeah. this yes one. the last directory I I have everything until pgsql but pgsql directory is empty for me. Oh, so you have you have not created the cluster actually till now. Did you did you use init db db now? Yeah, init db was used, and uh -huh. uh, I do have all of those directories created within init db like pg two phase pg table phase. All of those. Is it Red Hat Linux? It's uh, Susie Linux. Mm, not sure. It should be there. By default, directory is this var lib pg sql data only. Actually, mm. anyways, it if, if is the var lib pg sql containing all the directory based directories there. Every directory is there. Is it, uh, is every it, other it, directory is there, but just maybe with, this, with this, PGSQL, it's no, empty. No. Yeah, those three maybe first has, three directories. Are. Mm -hmm. Maybe it has making this as data directory complete var lib uh, because generally the data directories var lib pg sql data inside data you will find all those directory all those configuration files and base file base directory table space directory pg val directory everything should be there under data actually not under pg sql. Did you mention minus D when creating a, a cluster minus D where lib PG SQL something like this? I have used in it DB uh, hyphen D slash U O one slash DB one. OK, then then it means is it has not created a cluster over here. It has not created a cluster on this directory. It has created. See this this directory this data directory is is the uh, default is the d default directed for the database cluster okay just like when you install oracle what happens that where it creates your configuration u01 app oracle uh, generally it specifies when you installing okay it specifies but in postgres it doesn't specify you can just say in it db by default your cluster would be created over here mm. where lib pg sql is containing the configuration your binaries where lib pg sql is containing the binaries of your postgres it is not containing your database cluster files okay your okay. software I binaries think, uh, and she, uh, did the command which are uh, post which are there on the installation followed by the whatever the commands are there on the site uh, am i right uh, sirisha you you specif you you followed my slide you followed my uh, recordings or you did it from postgres uh, site Postgres no, Postgres, uh, I think Postgres site. Yes, Sirisha, you can confirm. Yeah, we took it from the Postgres site uh, for uh, OS, the mm -hmm. installation and uh, downloading the configuration file and doing the installation part and all that. And then we use this init db okay. command to the cluster installation. See, see, I, mean, uh, I think you just specified to me as well. You used init db minus d u01 db1. Okay. So correct. this this is containing, this is containing, leave, forget data. This is containing your software binaries. Okay. And now when I am when I am stopping any cluster, I need to specify the data directory. So by default, your init db will create cluster in this PG SQL data, where lib PG SQL data. Okay. But I am not I have not created the cluster yesterday into this. I have when I've used init db yesterday, what I used. Okay. So if I Okay, so if I use init db, it creates my cluster in var lib pg sql data. Okay, mm. if I use only init db, you know, if you use init db minus d u01 or db5, whatever it is, it will create my data directory over here. So when I'm going to stop my cluster, I need to specify this u01 db5. Okay, that's it. Or yeah, stop. Let me see if I can run the status uh, command uh, from this. Just, just, uh, just, just check. Okay, just check. Okay, please check. Uh, I think uh, you're a bit confused in this. So this is uh, this is where lib 
varlib pg sql is containing postgres binaries mm. okay. this is containing the binaries if i use init db just init db then it will create a postgres cluster over here if i specify directly because uh, create, using init db in creating cluster is not a standard practice just like for the practice for the development you can do it but it's not a standard practice if you're using this yes you can use this if not that means it is not started you can start it you can pgctl start minus d whatever command you're typing just type start over here it will start it okay okay, okay. try to start you can just say pgctl start minus d u01 db1 it will start it then you can once started then you can try to stop it as well okay so this yeah. is about st starting and now uh, this is about stopping now startup sequence is uh, just like uh, your um, that it starts the server process allocate the shared memory used by the cluster io operations so when the memory is allocated it reads the control file okay for de determining where the whether the instance requires a recovery or not okay so as control file is containing your internal commits okay internal commits and the checkpoints so it will compare your commits and checkpoints with the data files and we'll we'll see whether it is required the recovery or not so in case of recovery the postgres process reads the last checkpoint location from the control file and replay the data changes from the val file pointed by the checkpoint location okay so this is uh, uh, what we have in in oracle as well which what smon does okay if there is any corruption on the val files or pg control file is unreadable then the cluster won't start okay so if there is any corruption in the val files or pg control file then the cluster will not start and this is very clear and uh, then it becomes a bit risky because there is no multiplexing okay of control file and val file so uh, the cluster won't start okay we'll show you i will tell you the commands how to start the cluster in such failure occurs but definitely that can cause a loss of data also okay so this is uh, how is it like when when it reads it compares the control file and it compares the data files and if see there's a, this mismatch in the checkpoint location then in the control file and the val files then it will it will just apply the changes do a data replay from the val file okay Once uh, uh, the... one small question Adam. can we recreate mm -hmm. the control file over here like uh, same as oracle yes we can recreate the control file there and the same as the, with the with the wall files as well, right? We can recreate those as well. Mm, yeah, we can recreate the wall okay, files. Thank as you. Well. Okay, so okay, this is uh, now about the PGCTL. So PGCTL has uh, two options. One is stop, start. Uh, then we have uh, four option. I would say status. Okay. Then we have reload okay so reload is one of the option of the pgctl okay you can see it here i have specified status stop and reload so reload is one of the option in pgctl reload status i hope you are understanding stop and start i already shown you reload is something whenever sometimes it is uh, parameters okay you know what are parameters the database are okay so if you change any parameter some parameters require a reload in in postgres okay some parameters need a reload when i change some parameters at the postgres level so that that uh, parameter file need to be reloaded so that mem it, if it is work memory or it shared buffer or some optimizer parameters some require some are changed at the runtime okay some are changed at the runtime some requires a reload and some requires a complete cluster restart okay some parameter change requires a cluster restart complete okay so one of one of one is the reload one of the option is reload okay reload is generally reloading your parameter file okay so some configuration parameter changes do not require a restart can be reloaded using pgctl utility okay it can also be used as pg reload configuration utility that is at the postgres level you can use it okay using this command select pg reload configuration okay this then is the pg control data okay and one small question 
um, how can we find a list of parameters uh, which can be reloadable, which can be restartable, which can be dynamic? Uh, it is specified in the parameter file itself. Uh, uh, when Whenever we are doing instance management, then I will let you know. Okay, that is the fourth or fifth chapter. Uh, I will tell you how to change the parameters as well and what parameters are uh, dynamic and static. Okay. So this is the uh, control file. Uh, to view the control file, we will show you the checkpoint information. Okay. Okay. A lot of other data. Okay. And uh, PG control last modified, last checkpoint, last checkpoint redo location. Okay. So this is uh, something which is. Um, not read cannot be read much by us okay so you can say time of last checkpoint so this is all about your max some some of the parameters as well which is specified here in the control file okay moreover it is used for the checkpoint okay. you can see this file Okay, here itself it is in the it is in the global directory PG control. Okay, it is in your data directory global where all your metadata is already there. Okay, all your metadata system system files, all your metadata tables, everything is there in the global directory. So in the same directory, your control file is also there. Okay, PG underscore control. This is also there in the uh, <coughs> in, in the global directory. Okay. So this is your uh, structure. Okay, your configuration data directory layout. Okay, because database cluster is known as a data directory layout where your database cluster resides. So this is your structure. Uh, global. Okay, contains the cluster-wide database object. So global, global is containing cluster-wide objects. So all your system tables, metadata. Okay, only the metadata which is at the global oh. level. Just like users are at a global level in postgres but schemas are at a database level right so your users information will be stored in the global level your table space information would be stored at the global level but what about the tables pg underscore table because table belongs to a database okay please tables doesn't belong to a cluster so your tables metadata would be contained in the base directory okay it will contain in the base directory but your glo global will contains it global is also a table space i think i've already shown you yesterday and base is also a table space okay so these both are table space pg underscore global which is mapped to this directory global and then there is a pg underscore base that is mapped to uh, the base directory right then there is a pg underscore table space these are the major directories pg underscore table space where it is uh, containing a link to the table space if you create a table space that is external i think we already use a table space command okay so pg underscore table space then uh, it is pg underscore x log uh, pg underscore x log means is uh, the it contains the right ahead logs but i think over here it is pg underscore val okay this is a slide from actually postgres 9 okay uh, in postgres 9 it was x log okay don't get confused this is uh, from 9 postgres 9 and uh, now it is now we are using postgres 12 so it is has become pg underscore var earlier it was known as x log everything remains the same they just change the name okay they just change the directory name okay then is a pg underscore log that is containing your uh, all your log files okay i think this is now log only okay this is containing your log files okay i think i need to change the slide also okay now this is log so this is containing your all your error log files and other 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 log files okay so this is your log file now this is also very important okay this is very important now this file would be generated at every restart okay every time you restart this is a new file good, going to be generated then our different status directory which might uh, whenever you raise a bug might be internally these might be needed by your uh, support team for raising any bug or something 
okay snapshot pg statics pg transactional then there are some configuration files now these files will work on we will cover these files in um, in this training itself which is pg is postgres.conf now this is just like a parameter file okay this is a parameter file this file is generally for security purposes we will be covering all those all these three files okay in the later chapters okay uh, then there is the same uh, i have just uh, one more slide for the same thing which i already specified now this file is important postgres postmaster.pit so when your cluster i think i already told you yesterday also this file would be there if your cluster is running this file would be removed if your cluster is uh, stopped okay but if you do an abort okay that is immediate then this file would not be removed okay this file would not be removed it just stop the cluster okay then you have to manually remove this file postmaster.pid <coughs> okay so how to remove the cluster you stop the directory and you delete the data directory okay you stop minus d you specify the directory whatever it is maybe u01 db1 or whatever it is okay whatever it is and uh, then you delete the data directory okay so there is no such inventory or such things or no uninstall assets some nothing is there you just remove this uh, directory you stop the and remove the cluster that's it okay so if the directories are at different places like under that cluster we have uh, so uh, how do we find it like if or it has to be one 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 as to one no no it is see data directory is only one you all your pg val i told you everything should remain there there is no facility of moving your pg val val files sometimes it looks uh, uh, not good as well because you might be you want to have your pg val on a faster disk or something but this is how you design but for pg table space you can move your table space so now to see uh, what all we have so you have to go to this pg table space when you're removing this you go to the table space you see what all what where where is your table space so you go ahead and remove it you check your archive uh, uh, location where your uh, archives are placed you check your parameter file and you remove your archives from there then it can be a pure cleanup so you're cleaning up the database so you just need to keep the software but remove all the things which are related to date table space and archive means data and archive yes yes so you can create again like another instance or like uh, so once you clear it this so how you you can go ahead and create another one or means you don't need to do the whole thing again no you just need to again in it you have to in it, it another yes. In a yeah. DB, yes, in a DB. Installation is done. Binaries are installed. You have installed whatever Zyper, whatever you have used. You have installed the Postgres. Now, to, just like we created two clusters yesterday, right? In a DB minus DU01 DB1, in a DB minus DU01 DB2. We created two clusters. And by mistake, if we delete something of like the binaries, then do we have like kind of we keep a backup or? Uh, other location means it has to be current or we can restore it from the any uh, tar file or something we can restore it from the tar file also can restore the tar file doesn't also. it like um, okay okay so it's just the original okay. binary okay yeah okay i'll try to use it if i need okay so uh so deleting the data that delete deleting your cluster is there is no utility mention only just you have to stop it and then delete it okay there is no utility by postgres and you can check where your table spaces data files are using the pg table space and you can delete it okay then is the pg switch wall okay there is a utility we'll go to other utilities as well every chapter i will try to add one more utility in in because this is not relevant uh, to any particular topic but i'm just adding one more utilities to this this is switch val file okay this is also very important in a day-to-day -day work okay so this is select uh, pg switch val Okay. 
this is just like you're switching of your redo log files or val files it will move to the next okay it moved to the next okay so let me show you the like it's like the switching redo log file like yes okay, okay. so it is a switching of your log files but you see the number of log files are not increasing over here okay the number it is something different it is something different is not as as uh, equivalent what we have in oracle okay so switch log file is a command it will return the sequence of the log file next sequence number if you see over here what it show you pg moves to the next right ahead log file allowing the current file to be archived so if you have any problem you have any corruption something happens then you do it or you want to switch it and make the half of your file to be archived then also you do it the return value is the ending right ahead log file plus location plus one within just completed so it will just return you the next log file okay but it is a bit different in oracle it happens it it even switches even the log file is empty so if the log file is empty there is nothing to be archived to the archive location it will not archive the data it will just start the pointer from again it will just clean the contents and start it just like any corruption happened it will recreate the file kind of it will recreate the file but it will not switch to the new file it will not make a uh, keep on adding up your log file just see if i keep on switching but the files are only three okay files are only three it is not adding it it is not adding up when i am switching it okay so this is this is uh, uh does the archive problem. log increments then like is uh, they just have three uh, log files but also, no 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 it's not increment if it is empty it will not increment okay it will not increment the archive files and if it is not empty then it will increment then it will copy it to archive that is what is mentioned in this slide it moves to the next right ahead log file allowing the current file to be archived okay so this is how it will works okay we would be uh, covering more in the instance management and file management chapter about log files and archive files so this just i am added was utility to this this chapter pg switch val file so this is for the switching so there is a bit of difference now uh, i think uh, we would be covering this in uh, once more in the instance management so now i think uh, by this time you might be knowing this file postgresql.conf okay that is uh, you can just over here if you have already installed uh, then you can just check all the parameters also okay by that time uh, like uh, you can also check this parameter pg sql uh, this is also kind of file you can explore on more postgresql.com this is a pfp file or sp file okay a kind of parameter file <coughs> okay So this is all about your managing your uh, cluster. These are some shortcuts I have specified in these slides. Once you see this slide, you can see this shortcut uh, minus D uh, information about all the objects. I can just show you as well. slash d it shows you all your tables all your relations indexes tables and everything uh, dn is for showing of your schemas dn plus one is showing the schemas with the permissions okay slash l to see your databases backslash uh, what else df is list of functions okay df plus with the permissions as well okay so just just in this slide once you see this slide you can just try all these commands okay con info this is also very important command you'll get to know which what is the information how how you are connected okay it is showing you you are connected to database postgres as user postgres why did this run file at port number 5432 so if you are in your database just like current user is there uh, so how to check which database you are you can just con info okay so you can even say current user 
select current schema select current database okay these are the three commands uh, also you you can check so uh, like some of these three commands you can check con info okay so um, one question over here uh, uh, anu is there any any command or any switch that you know to check like we can see that with con info that you know who is connected or what is the username but can we get the session id or can we get the session id at the cluster level as well session id at the cluster level pid you are talking about current current id yeah current id for the user uh, plus that you know the uh, the id of all the users current and that is there. Yeah, yes. there, there there are session tables there are session okay. tables okay. dictionary tables but, but for this user we cannot get it right like if uh, we want to let's say let's say that you know we are working with the developer and he is running something we don't know that you know what is running so we ask him hey can you give me your whatever is what is your session id mm -hmm. um, i think there, we... there is there is a command i think uh, pg underscore pid current pid kind of is there okay let me try select pg underscore backend pid something like this no 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 it is it might be then with the brackets yeah, yeah it is there so this is the session id pid is the session id actually in postgres thank you so you can you can check it from here okay so so some some commands comes with the brackets and some are come without brackets i am not sure what is the difference uh maybe these are at the database level or i don't know okay okay you can just see okay it will just show you current information okay so pg backend pid pg uh, then you can say select current database select current schema and set current user okay so we'll go we'll go uh, like couple of slides we'll cover over here in the database management this is about the cluster management we are talk about okay we have not reached the instance management we have not reached the database management so so don't rush okay we have not i'm not leaving anything i will talk about more about uh, your user schemas as well in this chapter database management and then all the files val files and archive files and then we'll talk about uh, instance also how to change the parameter at parameter file level okay okay then we'll move to the sql commands okay let's cover a couple of slides over here okay i think we have already discussed all those things okay this is just a recap for all those things so what a database cluster is okay you can see this diagram this very important diagram or i will use this so you can see this database cluster has user groups database and table spaces so table space does not belongs to any database okay this should be very clear table space does not belongs to any database and users also doesn't belong to any database okay users are independent of the user are at the cluster level okay users are at the cluster level and table spaces are also at the cluster level okay so data users are also the cluster level and tables is the other cluster you create a user at the cluster level so that user can connect to uh, to a database if it has a privilege to connect okay if it has a privilege to connect it will connect to any data it can connect to if the privilege is given it can connect now postgres is user which is as a super user yeah so you can see i am connecting for postgres i am not requiring privilege so don't think in that way postgres is user a super user or you can see a sysdba in oracle right so sysdba can connect to any database to it can, can but you are not connecting to any cluster there is no concept of container database you are not con connecting to a cluster whenever you are connecting you are connecting into a database only okay okay but users and table space are all at your cluster level okay they are all at your cluster level then is a database now database contain catalogs catalog means your metadata catalog is also tables only okay and nothing nothing is a pg underscore tables only pg underscore tables pg underscore uh, sessions pg underscore user settings so they are different tables belongs to uh, catalog then schemas 
okay so uh, it it contains schemas and it contains some extensions so what are extensions this we will going to cover okay later on uh, extensions if i talk about is the external utilities actually okay external utilities uh, which can be used uh, just i give you an example a db link db link is by default not there because postgres is is, is a technology is, is something open source right so a lot of uh, different companies are working on postgres developing packages right developing packages so these are external packages you can install db link is by default is not there in postgres okay in this community's version so somebody developed a db link uh, uploaded that package into postgres site i can download that uh, that that and use it something like that okay some packages would be paid some would be free um, uh, some will provide some tuning utilities because by default doesn't have much ex you cannot do much on the tuning perspective so some people will develop right some lot of developers are there so external packages you can say extensions so now these schemas i think you must be you must One you second. Are... Anna? Yeah. Uh, i don't know uh, is it right time to ask or not so when you say database i know database uh, user okay then what is the schema again so schema is the uh, yes yeah, schema is the collection of objects okay schema is the, so schema and users are different users is used to log into a database okay user is logging to a database and logging to a schema actually and then uh, database is the, the uh, database is the collection of schemas so schema is containing the objects so i i think uh, i shown you this right so if if we are doing a comparison with the oracle both users and schema they are pretty much within the database but here mm -hmm. you have the individual user accounts outside of the database but yes. the application schema is present within the database is that a correct statement right and uh, all of the individual uh, the i mean uh, when we are talking about the users when they are managed at the cluster level they are given access to the schema or the database i mean does it inherit is there an inheritance if you give access to uh, you so have that to give okay. you will take it right again okay you have to okay once user is created you have to give an access to connect to a database access first access mm -hmm. you have to give the access to connect to a database then you have to give the access to usage on that schema okay you have to use okay. that i think you have to we have to forget what we learned in oracle okay let's like uh, it's like it's it's a bit complex it's a bit complex than oracle but uh, but we can simplify it okay it's a bit complex than oracle so see this con info okay we know you can see you are connected to a database postgres as user postgres so you are not connected as a postgres but now if you see your current schema your current schema is public i will tell you what public is but you are connected as user postgres but you are connected to a public schema okay i don't have a schema right now if i create a schema just like a create schema s2 okay i can say create now i am a postgres user i can create a table s2 dot xyz uh, maybe a integer i think this syntax is very similar this small normal sql commands we'll covering sql commands also but this is sql is uh, in every database same right the same over here so create table s2 dot so i'm creating the table into s2 schema okay i am a user postgres okay but uh, my Hello. current schema is public okay now if i do create table xyz a integer what is the database for this right now database is postgres only i am connected to a postgres database user is postgres database is postgres database name is postgres user is postgres but current schema is public okay now i created one schema s2 okay because i didn't had any schema i did created a table s2 dot xyz okay s2 dot xyz and it this table got created in schema s2 but the owner of the table is postgres user okay but now i created one more table xyz 
can you tell me in which schema it is going to create i have not specified a schema over here okay so it will be definitely it will be in, in postgres user the user is postgres but with schema it may create a public schema it will going to create in public schema because the current schema is public okay then tell me one thing so uh, uh, okay can you create one more schema s3 once I'll come to it. I'll come to it. Don't worry. I will really, really try all those things. So uh, you have got this point, right? Database users and users and table space are the cluster level. Okay. No, no. Uh, users... My question. Uh, no. One second. My question is. So when you say schema, right? Can you go to uh, that uh, party? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in S2, you are creating object X Y Z, right? So mm -hmm. can I create the same X Y Z object in S3 schema? Yeah, yeah, I can create. I created in 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 S2 and S3, so I can create one more schema. So I say, create schema. So, uh, so it's something like that. Each database can be collection of schemas. Okay, yeah. and each I, schema is independent. Independent means. Yeah. Ah, independent. Yeah, yeah. Each schema is independent of each other. But all schemas belong to one database. So now these schemas are belonging to which database? Uh, Postgres. Postgres database. Because I'm 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 doing all these things in Postgres. I'm connecting to a Postgres database. So I am doing all those things in a Postgres. So this is belongs to Postgres database. Okay. So over this here, I know, like uh, when we belong to Postgres, the schema name has to, the relationship is same like uh, the way we usually have. No, like for yes. one database, we are creating schema. So we need to have unique schema names. So yes, if you create to... another user, you can again use S1, S2, S3 as the schema belonging to that uh, uh, database. But create and can, can the cluster have multi cluster can have multiple databases also, no? Yeah, yeah, it can have multiple databases. So whatever that diagram, like once you do this, like if uh, like so under one cluster, we can have multiple databases. The database names has to be unique. Mm -hmm. Under mm -hmm. one database, we can have multiple schemas. The schema names has to be unique. Under schemas, mm -hmm. we can have collection of tables. The tables has to be unique. Uh, unique. Under cluster, we can have uh, multiple users. The username has to be unique. They can connect Gita, to sorry. any database. Gita, sorry, I need to connect mm -hmm. to offshore call. So, uh, no, uh, you can continue. Uh, please, uh, uh, the recording will stop once you uh, close that. Close the session, okay? Okay, okay. anyways, uh, just just five minutes more. We are, we will be there. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think this is clear, right? Cluster contains users, database, table spaces. Databases contains catalog schemas and extensions. So these schemas will have tables, views, sequence, functions, event triggers. I think this all all uh, objects you might be knowing it. This is similar to other databases as well. And and okay. the tables like the files they go to that we have to choose the ta table space from the cluster level, no? The, the storage, right now, the right actual now, storage. Right, yeah, storage, everything is going to base base table space now. Okay, base table space now it is going, going okay. It is going to a base table, base table space by default. I have to change table space at a database level or at a cluster level or at a uh, table level also. That I, I think already shown you, right, on that day. Alter and when you're creating table space, it has to be cluster level? It has to be at the cluster level. What do you mean by this? Uh, the uh, table space, new table space. Yeah, yeah. Table uh, space you... is the cluster level. It is at the cluster level. I can assign it to any database. I can make that as a default table space for the database, for the user, or for a table. I can I can assign it to. But right now it is not. Those are the use. actual files, no? Because what you had, uh, what I remember is when we create a table for each table, there will be one file created, that one GB, <laughs> until it doesn't get filled and it belongs to that table space if we don't decide don't uh, until if we specify it otherwise it is in the base we will create we'll get so many files if we have 100 tables we'll get 100 files over there mm -hmm. right 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 yeah 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 table space contain tables and uh, each table has a file so all those files will be there in the table space this is also a question i am yeah got yeah it. yeah no, uh, I, I was asking, uh, can there be multiple uh, table spaces? But table space creation is at the cluster level. Assignment yes, yes. can be at the schema level, uh, uh, schema level yes. or the uh, 
database yeah. level or at the table level also right 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 basically the same table space can be used for multiple databases in that cluster yes so it it's can like be. It's, it can be yeah so that it's just it like is. a namespace no it looks like just like a namespace it's nothing like yes. a location size and all because mm -hmm. it's just yes. kind of uh, maybe management for the easy management some segregation some naming something because for yeah, everything you are having going to have files over there right it's naming a directory it's not a collection of files it's not like a table space and then we are giving data files yeah, it's almost it's like a, just a name, name of the directory yes it's a name of a directory it's kind of a name of a directory okay and that just too like, maybe just for the easy management like you want yeah, to put all the management. accounts yes. under account or yeah, like receivable it will become very difficult right that how if uh, everything would be putting in the same base directory space issue can come up easily right usually a standard how many table spaces you have in the real time for each application generally there is one table space generally for each database there is a table space okay and if your database is getting very huge then for each schema we can have a table space okay okay so one so, question uh, arnav uh, so the user is i mean the user is postgres and we are having multiple schemas created within the database so the postgres will have access to all the tables created under various schemas within the database if it has access to the database but let's say you have a table created uh, i mean table name abc created under schema 1 and table uh, 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 table def created under schema 2 so um do you connect manually to this uh, schema because when you are trying to Can create please, a schema i don't uh, type the question please i think uh, okay so uh schema 2 uh doesn't i mean okay you repeat it repeat it repeat it once more okay question uh, first question is can you connect to schema 2 directly to the database using instead of using postgres user can uh -huh. you connect using uh schema 2 s2 at rate postgres something like that can you use at all no no i cannot use it see oh. uh schema you cannot connect schema is a collection of objects schema is not an user you can connect with a user only so now user will okay. have its default schema okay so user okay. is the owner of a schema so schema has a owner okay so schema okay. Uh, maybe we'll cover it tomorrow now i think we are already um, the schema has an owner okay so owner is a okay. user okay so it has a one to one relation between schema and owner okay but one 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 user can have like it's not one to one i would say uh, a user can own multiple schemas so it is user one one to many actually user from user to schema it is one to many one to many okay so, user... so there is no concept of schema to schema connection let's say if there is if uh, see, see there is a there is a one user can one user can be an owner of multiple schemas okay but one schema owner is only one it's like no like it's not like one schema has two users as an owner okay then there would be a default schema whenever he's logging to which schema is logs in by default okay that will cover in the search path there's a search path utility will cover by default just like postgres is uh, postgres when i am logging to postgres so what is a by default schema it is coming public i have not specified any schema but it is coming public it is due to a reason of public is coming due to a settings in in this database mm -hmm. a public schema mm -hmm. by default is coming right okay. so there is a, due to a setting it is coming public okay and uh, mm, so say, let's they... say if the application is connecting i mean once you have all the applications set up in this database so when the mm -hmm. application is trying to make a connection to this database and uh, trying to uh, let's say if you have a query drafted uh, between uh, uh, having 
i mean having objects from two different schemas mm-hmm. so it should be connecting using the postgres or postgres uh, similar yeah, yeah. Um, you can connect user. to a schema and then you can create a joint statement you can access other schema like what what i did i was in a public schema but i created a table in s2 right yes. in s2 schema now if i want to because my current schema is public so if i want to refer now if i say select star from xyz which schema it is referring when nothing is there it is referring to which table it is referring to a table in a public schema but now if i want local. to check yeah the not local yeah yeah you can say local default uh, basically default uh, schema whatever default is the schema, default you can say yeah, yeah current schema you can say now if i want to refer to s2 syz to s2 dot xyz as simple as that right. right so so this is this is how how it works okay so this is this is, see this is we should not get much confused okay this uh, if you create different schema name different user name then it becomes a chaos okay uh, the default what we say uh, what i say i think we know this uh, suggested on that day to use paint but i am not good at it okay so what is the default way to do it what is the standard way to do it you create one user u1 or maybe i say hr and you create you create a user hr and you create a schema also hr okay and you make it that as a user so the confusion will stop okay i can make default schema of user as hr so this will become its default schema i can do a setting i will tell you how to do that okay and then i create a user maybe scott okay a user is scott schema is also scott and i will make this as a default okay so we should not get confused we should not just like keep on going doing it hr user and schema is scott and scott is user and schema name is hr we should not do this this is not a standard practice standard practice it whatever the user name is that is should be the schema name and there should be one to one mapping okay that is the standard way to do it in postgres okay it is bit different than uh, in oracle because i am also coming from that background i have not touched mysql i have not worked on mysql but people say it is also similar in mysql and sql server okay yeah so so see sql server i, I have done uh done a bit in in i think that is 278 years back i worked on sql server a bit yeah yeah shutosh yeah, i'm saying i think with this uh, design right my uh-huh. understanding is they are trying to avoid the synonyms maybe uh yeah, yeah yeah synonyms anyways i don't think it i've i've seen anything in like synonyms in, yeah in because that you know the this way if we have this design uh, that you know geeta like then we don't need to have that you know multiple synonyms which are again pointing to that the soft link that you know being created so this may be the case that you know maybe Mm-hmm. I have synonym. I've not heard in Postgres. Also, it is not there. I think so. Yeah, there won't be a need for synonym within the database because uh-huh. see, at maybe the it might the be. Day, it, are... it might be there in the Enterprise DB version because what if you download Enterprise DB? Okay, if you download Enterprise DB, they will have a dictionary tables. What will which will look like? Uh, how Oracle dictionary table look like? is all underscore v dollar db underscore user underscore i don't know why they are doing it but they they are making it simple for oracle dbs to learn it so this is there in the enterprise db okay enterprise db just making very similar to oracle enterprise db if you install from internet there's a paid version actually for one month it is free you can use it okay because because in my organization also we are using enterprise db actually in one of the database and one we are using free version okay so enterprise db is containing very similar to oracle so synonym is there in enterprise db but not in this communities version of postgres where we are you download it for free in enterprise db there is a synonym as well and general dictionary tables are also like this only it's not a pg underscore okay pg underscore is also there but there are this 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 uh, uh, this is also followed all underscore v dollar underscore this is also followed okay so fine so let us continue this uh, user seek man schemas uh, 
I think I think confusion if you see if you uh, going uh, to explore in this way you create different schema name different username that will become very confusing for you to manage in future Postgres. Yeah, I okay. think whatever the standard practice is there no maybe when you're tomorrow covering uh, this particular chapter you just uh, uh, tell us like share with us the standard practice so that like uh, yes in Postgres all these things are possible like having yeah, yeah. all the names so all over different but yeah, yeah, uh, obviously it is not a it's good possible. practice so like yeah, the way we have practice. no like in oracle yeah. we have even the installation there is a standard practice so you go anywhere okay. we will see a same installation so same like if you can just give some standard practices so like we know that like this is the right way yeah. to do it if we are if you are supposed to do it so then yeah, there yeah. will be less confusion maybe and also like i would suggest one more thing like uh, for, like where, wherever like we, we are sharing with we know the wherever you're sharing uh like uh, this uh, like recording and the uh, presentation like because see uh, we were trying to like it's difficult to listen to the presentation and copy the commands uh, we really wanted to just copy paste it and see in because me and sirisha like uh, we installed it on the aws ec2 instance so I did in Linux, she did in Suzy. So like we wanted to try those commands, but like we don't have anything handy. So if you, whatever you're teaching us, we can copy paste and put it there and see it. So that like, uh, you know, like uh, we'll sync it, sync with you. So mm -hmm. maybe you share with Vino so that he can share with us or like any Google Drive or something, let us know like so that uh, we recordings, will... recordings, I think uh, is with with because he yeah, is the recording is with him, but like uh, the oh, recording, it's very difficult to uh, do a practice. Mm -hmm. So it, and uh, just to re review, no, like once you have okay. a document, it's very easy to do it. Right. Right. I'll show okay, you the so slide. Just, uh, share it so that like will be faster. Like you can do yeah. it on WhatsApp also. That is also fine. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. Fine, I'll do it. I'll do it WhatsApp then first. Okay. Yeah, no whenever problem. You, yeah, whenever you'll be creating the maybe I I think you will create it. Okay, but uh, I'll try to do it on WhatsApp today. Yeah, okay. temporarily and, so that like uh, yeah, we'll yeah. start practicing so something. Let's, let's have a session tomorrow. I think uh, uh, like as everybody agreed to have an off on India Sunday and Monday, and uh, so let's have a uh, session tomorrow morning. Okay, and then we'll keep an off on India Sunday and Monday and US Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, that will work, right? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, I think everybody's from US anyways, not from India. So is that, is that uh, the the uh, is that the US Sunday or uh, like India Sunday? Sorry, I uh, got confused with that. Tomorrow is a session. Tomorrow is the recession. Tomorrow is the US Friday, right? Tomorrow would be session. Uh, okay. Sun, and uh, and uh, US Saturday Sunday would be enough. That like India Sunday and Monday. Okay. See, our sessions were Monday to Friday. We are doing session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday to Friday. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks all. Thanks all. Bye. Thank you. Bye.